Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. Today we're going to be talking about high pass filters. This is the second installment in our three part series on basic filtering, and I'm going to show you how to make a really cool pad that kind of fades in over time. It's going to create a great intro for our track. So make sure you've got your voltage converters. Let's get it going. So I have this beat that I started and I got a lead sound that kind of comes in here a little later on, but I got this drum intro. So I'll play you from uh, sort of towards the end of the drum intro here into the lead. And what I want to do is create a pad sound that gives us a little bit of a dramatic kind of push into that next section. Here we go. All right, so you get the idea. Uh, I already set up a chord here. It's sort of a nice a semi dissonant chord and I've opened an instance of Massive. So let's go ahead and let's start out by talking about uh, high pass filters in general. So far we've talked about low pass filters. Remember low pass filters take the cutoff frequency and they pass what's below it and they attenuate what's above. The resonance as we push that up a little bit creates a little boost in gain right next to the cutoff frequency so we can get more emphasis on that movement if we want it. And then the number here, two or four, indicates the slope of the cutoff. So four is a steeper cutoff, we get slightly less high end with that. Now a high pass filter is just the opposite of a low pass filter. A high pass passes what is above the cutoff frequency and attenuates what is below. All right, so let's take a listen. I'm gonna hold down a key here and let's bring up the cutoff. And without the resonance, you hear it like this. And then if I play a really low note or a lower note, you'll be able to hear that very well. So it has a very interesting sound, but I feel like high pass filters tend to be a little bit underused because there aren't a whole lot of sounds that are sort of archetypal high pass sounds, at least not like we have with the low pass filter. So uh, what I wanted to do was talk about an approach to making sort of a pad that kind of fades in. It's going to create some nice drama, as we call it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm making sure that I'm only listening to filter one. I've got my oscillator one set so that it's a sawtooth. I'm going to turn on my second one and set it to be a square wave. All right, and I'm gonna tune it an octave down. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. You guys hear that that square wave is adding something down below. We've got the sawtooth up above, bada bing, bada boom, you got it. All right, now let's go over to the, uh, the envelope section. I'm gonna go ahead and just push up the attack a little bit so that it has kind of a nice contour and doesn't hit quite so hard. Maybe just a little longer. There we go. Yeah, we just don't want to punch on it because Massive has really snappy, punchy envelopes and that's not what we want here for this pad sound. Remember, pads tend to be more atmospheric. Uh, they kind of fill out the background. They tend to draw less attention to themselves rhythmically than other instruments. They're meant to kind of sit there and fill out space and, and give a little bit of movement, uh, or I like to have them give a little bit of movement. So let's go ahead and let's listen to this. My idea here is to have this, this high pass filter start out high and then kind of pull down. Let's listen. and I'm clipping just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna pull that down slightly. Now, let's go ahead and use envelope one to modulate or change the cutoff frequency over time. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to click on the crosshairs for envelope one. Let's drop it in the box, boom. Now envelope one is set up to modulate the cutoff. However, we need to do one last thing. We just need to set a range of modulation, okay, by clicking and dragging up basic modular functions in Massive. So let's take a look at envelope one. We got our attack, we got our decay, we got our sustain level, we got our release, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the attack to be very short. So that basically right when I hit the key, the cutoff is gonna be all the way up and we're gonna hear basically nothing. So let me put the sustain all the way up, let's listen. You can hear very little here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna pull down the sustain and lengthen the decay so that over time that cutoff is actually gonna come down slowly revealing the sound. Okay, let's take a listen. Make it nice and long. And we don't have to start it quite so high if we don't want. You 
Let's check the timing here because this chord is being held for four bars. Okay, not quite long enough. Let's turn up the decay a little bit more and let's add some resonance to really emphasize that movement. Okay, I like that. I'm just gonna lengthen the decay a little bit more and I'm gonna to go to my amplitude envelope and turn up the release a little bit because we've got a little bit of time uh, at the end of this chord before the, uh, the next section comes in. So let's listen. Okay, I like that. That's working pretty well for me. Now, let's just add a little bit more movement, okay? So first of all, one thing that might be nice to do is just add a little bit of detuning and some chorusing. So we'll just go to the voicing tab. We can add a few voices. We can go to like five or six voices. Be careful, this will change your overall volume. And then if you turn up the pitch cutoff, it's gonna tune those voices apart. So basically what we're doing is we're making it so that every note that I hit is actually gonna play six notes and it's gonna spread the tuning apart slightly. So let's listen to what it sounds like as I push the tuning apart here. So you could hear that it was just a little bit louder at the beginning, but as I pulled that tuning apart, it gets kind of lush. The other thing we can do is turn on the pan position and uh, it's gonna take those voices and instead of sending them all right down the middle, it's gonna take them and it's gonna spread them across the stereo field. Let's take a listen. Okay, that's working pretty well for me. You could also add a little bit of reverb if you want, but that's a matter of taste. It's right there, ready, readily available for you. All right, and I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit to make sure that we're not clipping. I can always turn it up in my DAW here, and I'm gonna add a slight bit more reverb. Let's take a listen. Let me just make sure that we're not gonna clip here. That's important, you will hear it distort, and there are great ways to make distortion massive, but this isn't one of my favorites. There we go. Let's be responsible about our distortion. All right. Here we go. Uh-oh, hey. All right, so we made a nice pad using a high pass filter. There are all kinds of directions you could take this. You could add uh, panning effects, you could add some vibrato. There's so much to be done. This is just a simple blueprint for a sound that really goes a long way in adding some uh, musicality and some expression to your track. It's always great to add movement and things in the background, especially when you have a really like pumping beat, you know? I like pumping beats. I like pumping and thumping beats. So once again, this is Evan Sutton. You can catch me here at DubSpot in New York City or online. I'll catch you next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.